Hey Watch Fam, this is Robert Velasquez at Spanish Rob for Watch With Us channel. And we're here at a rooftop in New York City in August with uh, Claude Greisler. Thank you for coming, and he's here in New York City. Uh, and he's gonna show us the new Masterpiece 2. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar with Armin Strom, um, Claude Greisler is the co-founder, and this young independent manufacturer is just turning 10 years old, to, like this year, right? Exactly, yeah, in August. So we are celebrating our 10th anniversary of the manufactory. That's amazing. And then how did this whole thing start? For those who aren't familiar with, with, uh, with Armin Strom, uh, could you give us like a brief rundown of who you are, your role in the company, and uh, what's the brand about? So the company started by Mr. Armin Strom himself. Mr. Armin Strom was known for skeletonizing watches. He did uh, mainly unique pieces, hand skeletonized. He had a very unique uh, style of, of, uh, of skeletonizing uh, wrist watches. Um, Armin Strom himself, he's from uh, near Bern in Burgdorf. Um, myself and my good friend Serge, we are also from Burgdorf, born in the same year. And uh, when Armin Strom got slowly retired, he asked us, Serge as a watch collector, myself as a watchmaker, if we are not interested to take over the brand from him. And we were both thinking about, okay, let's go. that's cool. I mean, we have a small heritage of skeletonizing uh, watches, both of us big watch fans. So it's okay, let's, let's, let's take this challenge and build up a brand uh, out, of, out of it. That's amazing. And then what direction did you go in with the brand? He decided he makes skeleton watches, and he made very few watches, right? Yeah, very limited. Um, so Armin didn't have the facility to produce his own movement. He bought movement from movement suppliers. He bought vintage stock uh, movements, and he disassembled them, and he was skeletonizing them. So he was strongly believing if in not covering the movement with the dial. So he never worked with plain dials. He always had the movement visible from the front as well as from the back side. And to give even deeper view into the movement, he was opening up by hand those, uh, those movements by, by doing some uh, sewing, filing, and engraving uh, of wow. watch movement. Hand engraving and the dial. Hand engraving, yeah. Wow. That's great. Yeah. And then you guys decided to take it to a different level, and you guys decided to make it very, very complicated. You, you, made, a, you made a very complex independent brand that I think rivals a lot of the other independent brands. It, it, it stands on its own feet because it's, it's a pretty complicated thing you guys make. Exactly, yeah. So when we took it over from Armin, we wanted to become independent from movement suppliers. We said, okay, the movement, which is in our eyes, in our passion movement, is the heart of the watch. And we said, okay, first of all, we have to be able to produce our own movement to build up a proper, uh, proper company out of it. And so we took the challenge in 2009 to really become a watch manufacturer. A watch manufacturer means we have our own R&D, uh, research and development office. We have uh, in-house uh, fabrication, a lot of CNC machines from milling to turning to gear train cutting, wire erosion, everything in the company. We have a decoration workshop, uh, so people doing hand beveling, doing Geneva stripes, uh, uh, spotting, all those different techniques of, of, of decoration an in-house uh, galvanic uh, treatments so that we can do the platings uh, of brass parts and of course the assembling which is also uh, in-house which is kind of kind of unique because not all independent brands can do all of it like some can do the finishing some can do in-house movements some do the complications but rarely do you see all of them at once and when i got to see the manufacturer after right after basel earlier this year i was really impressed that not only you guys are making these plates you're you're you're, you're you're in-house making these movements, but then I see you on the bench, like filing away, like doing some of the engraving and actually doing some of the polishing. <laughs> yeah. And but you, you're also engineering it, and then they're also complex, like they're very complicated watches. And for the people who aren't familiar, what exactly is a resonance? There's a handful of brands who do it. Um, I've heard of it. You know, we hear of other brands who do this. Um, but what makes yours different? And what is it for the people who don't know? What is a resonance? How do you explain that? So first of all, resonance is a is a complication which many many watchmakers were driven by by making the watch more precise. And resonance is helpful to have a better to give the watch a better timekeeping. Resonance means we have two watches, two movements in one watch which synchronize each other. By synchronizing each other, they get the better average speed, uh, so the watch becomes more more precise by the end of the day. 
And um, so our resonance is unique because we developed uh, three years ago a patented uh, clutch spring which allows the two balance wheels to synchronize each other. That's the uniqueness uh, in resonance. So the cool thing for me, in my as a watchmaker, resonance was cool because since the inventor of the pendulum watched all the big watchmakers, they are talking about resonance. Resonance was since the 70s century, it's in the watchmaker books because people were thinking, okay, how can one watch become more precise? Average speed out of two watches gives a much better timekeeping. But actually, in, since the wrist watches, there was never uh, done a proper, uh, proper resonance. Is it because the two movements weren't connected? Is that why? Or are they always connected? So if we go back in history, is um, the, the, the very first clock made, uh, a resonance clock made by Monty Chanvier, a French uh, clockmaker, who finally uh, achieved resonance by having two pendulums clock beating in resonance. And in his series, he was writing down that by sharing a suspension of the two pendulum, he achieved resonance. First of all, he was thinking about that the airspeed could maybe synchronize the two, uh, the two pendulums. But finally, as, as soon as he started to share the suspension of the two pendulum, and the two pendulums could, could communicate by transmitting micro-vibration from one pendulum to the other, he achieved a proper, a stable resonance. And our resonance uh, movement our resonance technology is hardly inspired by anti Chanvier because we do have the two hair springs linked in a, in, in a clutch system. So the two hair springs, they can communicate in between them. And the hair springs are connected here. So if this one's moving this way and they both start kind of, they eventually start syncing up. Exactly, yeah. By, so the, the hair spring is by winding up the hair spring, we have a, a pull. By the opening of the hair spring, we have a push. Uh, on the on the stud, the stud is the end of the hairspring. There's this small metal part called the stud. The stud normally is fixed in a balance bridge. Instead of having fixed, we take benefit out of this pull and push effect, and we do synchronize. Thanks to the shape of the resonance clutch spring, we do synchronize the two hairsprings. And that's that part that goes like this, like right in the middle. Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha. The butterfly shape. Ah, uh, oh, that's really cool. So then, okay. So then you guys create this, this resonance, resonance, and you do it. Supposedly, like you do it, like kind of more real and more efficient, better kind of than any other brand. You guys make this true resonance. What decide? What makes you guys decide to make the masterpiece too? The masterpiece one was a GM as a dual time zone, or the masterpiece one was a dual time zone. Actually, the very first uh, resonance uh, pocket watch made by Abraham Louis Bourget had this double time uh, indication. Um, myself and Serge, we do both travel a lot uh, for uh, for our business. And uh, GMT is one of the most useful uh, complications in the watch industry. So the dual yeah, okay. time is really, is really um, having the two time displays. For the 10th anniversary, we wanted to have something special. We are Swiss German based company. Our uh, Bern is our hometown. The capital of Switzerland is our hometown. And um, Bern has a very old famous clock called the Zietglocke clock, which is um, actually the, the, the old town around this clock, this famous clock, is a UNESCO World Heritage. Um, Albert Einstein actually got inspired by this clock to come out with this theory of uh, relativity. Really? Yes. So there's still, you can still visit the Albert Einstein house which is just next to this famous uh, clock. So we wanted to to give um, uh, the inspiration came from our roots, from our hometown, this famous clock. And on the other hand, we wanted to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the manufactory and to build our very, very first grand complication. It's pretty amazing. And this is the world's first and only mineral pier or chiming resonance wristwatch, right? Exactly. There was never built a grand complication uh, based on the resonance uh, movement so far. It's usually one or the other because they're very complex. They're very complex. Yeah, you know, you have to imagine we have to we have two barrels, we have two gear trains, two escapements, two balance wheel. We have the whole uh, resonance clutch system. It already takes a lot of space in the watch. And we had to add somehow the minute repeater, which is a lot of parts. 
the hammers, the gongs, uh, all the gear train which is necessary to give the function of the military people. So it was a huge challenge to have all those parts set in one way. Alright, let's take a look at it. Yeah. Let's see it. So Masterpiece 2. Um, Masterpiece 2 is an homage to the philosophy or the DNA of the brand. Armin Strom, he was, as I mentioned, he was strongly believing of having the movement visible. This is a resonance minute repeater. Everything is fully visible from the dial side. You can explore the two balance wheels, including the resonance clutch spring at six o'clock. We have the sapphire dial. Underneath the sapphire dial is a fully skeletonized gear train bridge. It's a skeletonized uh, gear train from the minute repeater. We have the two hammers visible on the dial side, including the three-dimensional shaped gongs, which are not covered uh, in the, or stocked in the, in the case. The three-dimensional gongs are really showcased on the dial side going around the sapphire dial. Yeah, that's very interesting. You rarely see that not like on the peripheral of the case. And it's a very strange, unique shape because it's like kind of almost uh, like an eight sort of yeah. around the dial. And around the gongs, it's pretty cool. It's a bit thanks to the three-dimensional development we did together with my friend who was in charge of the minute repeater, um, Alain Schisser. And um, so the, the, the tools for the bending of the gongs were made in our factory because we are the first ones who really can bend the uh, three-dimensional uh, gongs. That's amazing. How do you decide on this color scheme and the size and the rose gold bridges? So the Rose Coast British, we wanted to highlight resonance. Resonance, which is signature for Armin Strom. That's why we have the, the two three-dimensional, also three-dimensional shaped um, balance uh, bridges with the tromblage finishing. The tromblage finishing, or also called frosted finishing, is made by our engraver. So every little single spot is engraved. It's not hammered, it's not sandblasted. It's really traditionally engraved uh, by hand. It's I a, saw that. That's that's very, very, very time consuming and painstaking. I saw is. that in your at your atelier when this woman was just just going at it, <laughs> hand by hand. Every single every little mark. Every single little mark is made by hand. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And that you don't see. You don't very see very often. Masterpiece collection uh, at Army Stores. Also, we are really pushing the decoration on a on a very very high level. Uh, so. We even spent hours and hours in doing decoration, in doing, in trying new kind of decoration, with mixing traditionally decorations with more modern decoration. So I think it's a very cool concept of having this all different kind of uh, of uh, finishings to discover on the movement. That's fantastic. On the back side, we can uh, see the mechanism of the minute repeater on the upper level. Um, on the bottom we have two vertical stacked independent going barrels. Um, why are they vertical stacked? Because we needed space to put the, the minute repeater. So a regular resonance has two barrels just built next to each other which take a lot of space in the watch of course. And the, for this particular piece, we have to have them build one uh, on top of the other. Wow. And it's two barrels that are both, that both power the, the minute repeater and... Actually, in total, we have three other? barrels. We okay. have two barrels, which belongs to, the, to, to, to resonance. So we have two independent going barrels, two independent gear trains, escapements and balance wheels. And of course, we also have a third barrel, which is underneath of the of the sapphire dial, which winds the the minute repeater. Wow, it's amazing. What's it made out of? Titanium. Case is made out of titanium. The watch is limited to ten pieces, which belongs to our tenth uh, anniversary. Uh, what size is the case? The case is a forty-seven uh, millimeter case. I think the movement needs space. We wanted to have a watch which is three-dimensional, a movement which is three-dimensional, a movement which, which shows the beauty of the mechanic. And therefore, we need some space. We need room to really let the, the, the part uh, taking a, a strong identity. 
it's a beautiful piece of artwork. It, it's it's it really is a masterpiece. Thanks so much for showing it to us, and uh, we'll get some close-up shots and video. And uh, I definitely want to take a look at this. But this is amazing to see it in person. You guys really outdid yourselves. Fantastic. Thanks so much for showing this, and thanks Thank for uh, for having us here. Thank you for having me. Of course, anytime, Claude. Anytime. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, we'll put the links up for uh, their Instagram, Armstrong, uh, and their YouTube or all their social media channels. I'm Robert Velasquez, Spanish Rob, uh, for Watch With This Channel. Thanks for watching.